stop it. Don't do it. Falsification of fraudulent proof of fund is a grievous offense that could actually attract misrepresentation and ban from Canada immigration. So don't do that. All right, viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video today, I'll be telling you about the implication of falsifying proof of fund, which is a very important thing that I need to discuss with you. And I'm bringing this topic to you based on the feedback that I got from two of my viewers, two of my subscribers that actually share the experience with me so that's why i feel that i should share it with you so you want to hang on tight stay tuned so that you can learn about the implication of falsifying proof of fund and what ircc actually require in terms of proof of fund hang on tight i would be back hello viewers you're welcome to my youtube channel i still remember my humble self mc bernardino this is canada reality with mc bernardino where i dish out content for those that are in canada and those that are intending on migrating to canada if by adventure this is your first time on this youtube channel please 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 take some few moments subscribe to this youtube channel there's a notification bell beside it come click on it so that anytime i drop a video you'll be among the first to get it and if you enjoy this video please please once again it doesn't cost you anything one of the ways you can actually encourage us is to hit on the likes button share this video on your social media and do whatever you feel will benefit from it thank you very much for doing that and also at this point i welcome our new subscribers and new viewers welcome to this youtube channel all right let's hit the ground running so when we talk about proof of fund what is proof of fund proof of fund is very pertinent it is very important as far as your application to immigrate to canada is concerned if you want to come into canada either through express entry provincial nominee through study through visit proof of fund is required and why it is required is because you need to be able to convince the immigration officer that when you eventually come into canada you will be able to fend for yourself you'll be able to take care of yourself and that's why proof of fund is pertinent all right so i haven't known that the next question i get from people is how much do i need to show as proof of fund so in answering that question it is relative relative because that it depends on the application you're applying for if you're applying for express entry i'll be linking in the video description down below how much you actually need to show as proof of fund and also if you're applying for visit you need to be able to show enough money in your account to show that while you are on visit in canada you'll be able to take care of yourself in terms of transportation feeding you need to be able to show so you need to inject more money the more money you can provide the better for you and also when you're coming on study in canada which is the question i get most time how much is required so how much is required is depending on how have you paid your full tuition fee if you have paid half of your tuition fee you need to be able to show the remaining balance in your bank account and in addition to that you need to also be able to show your living expenses averagely i say ten thousand canadian dollars suffice so with that it's okay another thing that is also a determinant to how much you show if you're coming on study is what's your family size back home you're living your family size back home and you're coming to study in canada you need to be able to show enough money in your bank account so that when you leave your family they can also fend for yourself in addition to this is somebody sponsoring you, your boss at work is sponsoring you, your uncle, your aunt is sponsoring you, he or she needs to show more proof of fund in their bank account because they have their own immediate family and they've decided to adopt you. So they need to show more money in their bank account. So I can't categorically tell you how much, but if you fulfill other requirements, additional 10,000 Canadian dollars, it's very okay. All right, so let us hit the topic of this course today. All right, I'll be starting with this email that I received from one of my subscribers that he received from IRCC regarding his application as regards to proof of fund. Good evening, sir. My name is from Nigeria. I am one of your YouTube subscribers. I applied for my study permit online since March 2020. I have done my medical and biometric as well. A few days ago, I got an email from Canada Immigration stating that the account I dropped is fraudulent and that I have 90 days to prove otherwise or I will be banned for five years. The title of the email was Procedural Fairness. I am sending this email to seek for your opinion. I look forward to your response, sir. Thank you so much. This is very, I mean, when I received this email, I was so devastated because I, the question I asked him then was that, did you actually falsify your proof of account? And he told me that it was an agent that actually applied for him and he actually i mean he couldn't really give me a very definitive answer so that really shows that the account statement that this person submitted was actually falsified and 
you know, people don't know that IRCC immigration officer, they know, they find a way of verifying this thing. They might not verify all applications, but the moment you give them a reason to verify, they dig further to actually know if their bank account or if that document you submitted is actually true or not. And if they dig further and they discover that it was falsified or there's any fraudulent stuff, they give you this procedural fairness. That means they don't just jump into conclusion. I mean, they give you the opportunity to prove them, prove otherwise, tell them, okay, they are actually wrong. So they give you the opportunity to, okay, prove to us that this is not true. Prove to us that this account was not falsified. And that's why they gave him that room to actually prove otherwise. But ob obviously, from the look of things, I don't know if he can actually prove that. Because the implication of not proving that is that you can actually be banned from entering Canada for five years. All right. I don't want to talk too much on that. Let us go to the second um, um, subscriber, the information the subscriber shared with me all right this this was actually the letter he got from ircc okay based on his application all right so this reference to your application for a temporary resident visa for canada okay so this person actually applied to come into canada so i have reviewed your application and document you submitted in support section blah 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 i don't want to bore you so much i have reasonable ground to believe that you have not fulfilled the requirement put upon by section 16 subsection 1 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, as stated below, okay? Specifically, the bank statement you submitted from Union Bank account, blah, 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 has been found to be fraudulent. Please note that if it is found that you have engaged in misrepresentation in submitting your application for temporary resident visa, you may be found to be inadmissible under Section 40, Subsection 1A of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. A finding of such inadmissibility would render you inadmissible to Canada for five years, for a period of five years, according to section 40, subsection 2A. So that is another email I got from one of my subscribers. So still on proof of fund. So that proof of fund, it was discovered that the account was falsified. I know that, I mean, I will not debunk the fact that People find it very hard to get a proof of fund. The money is not there. I mean, the stumbling block. I actually know of some people that actually they apply for express entry and the application is almost true, but proof of fund is the problem they have. I know it's a big deal, but I will advise you: it is better for you not to even submit anything that to falsify any information because when they come up with this procedural fairness for you to prove that it is you didn't submit a false document and you cannot prove it, then more or less you will be banned for misrepresentation for five years and the implication of that is that if you're banned for misrepresentation that doesn't mean that after the five years you will allow they will allow you to come into Canada no you still have to secure a lawyer to help you to prove that the ban that you had initially they have to come up with a reason for that so what I'm trying to say in essence is that obviously from these two cases that I'm sharing with you this uh my these subscribers of mine they are actually in one way or the other, either them or the agent that actually submitted the application for them, there was a falsification somewhere. I mean, the proof of fund was padded and IRCC have a reason to doubt it. And if these guys can't prove otherwise, then they will be in and their journey to Canada might actually just be terminated as at that point in time, which is not really a good thing. All right, so let me take you to IRCC website where you can actually see for yourself the implication of um, misrepresentation. So this is IRCC website and it says clearly it's a serious crime to lie or to send false information or document to Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada, IRCC. This is fraud. It is called misrepresentation. Document fraud can involve either false or other documents such as passport, travel document, visa, diploma degrees, apprenticeship or uh, trade papers, certificates of birth, marriage, final divorce, annulment, separation of separation or death and police certificate. If you lied on an application or in an interview with an IRCC officer, this is also fraud. It is crime. If you send false documents or information well, we will refuse your application. We may also forbid you from entering Canada for at least five years. If we if give you a permanent record of fraud with us, take away your status as a permanent resident or Canadian citizen, have, have you charged with crime or remove you from Canada. So obviously, as you can see, it's a big deal. IRCC they don't take it with levity. If you are caught falsifying documents or information, 
there's a grievous offense for that. And in addition to that, even if you're in Canada and you're a permanent resident in Canada or you're a citizen in Canada, and at one point or the other, they discover that you falsify some document, your permanent resident could be retrieved, your citizenship certificates could also be retrieved. So what am I trying to say in essence is that, please, please, please try as much as possible to avoid falsification. And I know that in most cases that people that apply are not actually the ones that are actually culpable for these offenses. But when you give it to an agent, I mean, you have to be careful sometimes when you give your application for an agent to supply for I mean, the agent is going to promise you, don't worry, we are going to do that for you, we are going to get it done for you. But at the end of the day, some of the documents that this agent submits for you are falsified. I mean, so that is why it's you can't afford to make that mistake. I mean, ways, how can you, okay, let's talk about how can you actually go about the proof of form. I know it is, don't worry, I said it earlier on that, I know that it is a tough challenge to get the money, but try as much as possible to relate with friends, relate with family. I'll share my own experience with you. When it was time for me to build my account, I actually sought around information, um, uh, money from my friend, from my mom was also there, my sister also helped me out. So if you don't have your mom to help you, your sister, your brother can help you. If they are not there, your friends can also help you out. Just for you to show that money in your bank account, that this is how much you have. And also if you have gift deeds, if we can do that for you, I've, I'm, I think I've done a video on that, that can actually help you. But please do not falsify your proof of fund. It's a grievous offense and it attracts a very huge penalty. All right, so if you're coming to Canada, through skilled immigration, either express entry or provincial nominee. Let me take you through how much is actually required of you as proof of one. For a family of one, you need a minimum of 12,960. It could be more than that. Family of two, 16,135. And as keep progressing, you can see it. The family of seven requires 7,000, I'm um, taking 4,299 for a family of seven. And the more family you have from eight, nine, ten, you need to keep adding $3,492 to it. So that is how much you need if you are coming in through express entry or through any of the skilled path. But if you are coming as a student, earlier on I said, that depends on how much you've paid. If you've paid your tuition fee, everything, you'll be okay with additional 10,000 Canadian dollars just to show it in your proof of account. Because you need to be able to convince them that when you come into Canada, you can take care of yourself, transport, feeding, feeding accommodation, everything can be sorted out on your own. So, okay viewers, I, act I hope you actually understood the video that I brought for you today on proof of fund, the implication of it, and why you should not falsify your document, your bank statement for proof of fund. I hope you understood that. If you have any question, anything you're not clear about, based on what I've said, you need additional information, please feel free to drop it in the comment section and I will do justice to your question. I know you might want to ask me this question, how do I go about it? Just share your share, share your information and in, uh, those questions in the information section down below, in the comment section down below. And I will try as much as possible to reason with you, to give you suggestion on how you can go about it. But please, don't ask me to help you out. I don't do it. I mean, I've received so many emails, people telling me that I should help them to do that. I don't do that because I know it's grievous to falsify information and that's why I can't do that. But I can actually help you. We can rub minds together to see how you can actually go about that. And I know you'll be glad you re uh, you relate with me. So if you enjoyed this video, once again, guys, please hit on the likes button. Share this video with whoever you feel will benefit from this. You can actually save somebody from being uh, banned from Canada by sharing this video with them. All right. If you haven't subscribed once again, please hit on the subscribe button, hit on the likes button, hit on the notifications so that anytime I drop a video, you'll be among the first to get it. All right, at this point, I have to call it a wrap at this point. Till I come back to you again with another very exciting video on Canada reality with your own boy, MC Bernardino. Please stay safe, stay out of trouble.